Welcome to this heart opening practice. We are starting with either a bolster or a block under the shoulder blades. And you can choose either the block or the blanket under your head. And what I'd like for you to do is, um, is two things. The first one is to bend your knees. So your feet are, your hips are flat to the floor, but your knees are bent, and are bent as deeply as you can reasonably get them. And the arms are out to the sides, either in a T-shape or a cactus shape. If you wish, you can reach them overhead in a V-shape as well. And I'd like you for the first couple of moments of the practice to close your eyes and drop into your breath. you to breathe really fully into the upper back. And if you're feeling excess uh, back bending in your low back, then I encourage you to do one of two things. One, you could wiggle your hips forward towards the front of the mat a little bit more. Or you could even set your feet on the block and raise a hand if you need my assistance. your arms all the way overhead so that your arms are by your ears. And then bend your knees as deeply as you can and roll to your side and begin to use your arms to press up to seated. Excellent. So get comfortable and seated. You might be uh, try to take the leg in front that is not the typical leg you have in front. So for me, my habit would be my right, and therefore I put my left. Grab hold of your bolster or your blanket and sit on something for the beginning of your practice. So a skillful backbending practice is going to allow the backbend to emerge like around the entirety of the spine, as opposed to just hinging in the low back where it's pretty easy to flex. And to do that, we have to have mobility in the ribs and deep breath and kindness to work. So please on your inhale, reach your right arm straight to the sky, really tall. And then on your exhale, walk the left hand out and just bend that elbow, breathing into the side of your body. You can root your sitting bones here and let your head hang, perhaps. And just spend a moment being aware of the expansion of your ribs as you inhale and the softening, the gentle folding back of the ribs as you exhale. If you'd like, you can look up. and then slowly take it forward, just 45 degrees. This is an unusual one, but bear with me. Both sitting bones stay rooted. Inhale fully. Good, and then take the hand to the back of the head and lean back a little bit. Spinning 
your chest to the sky, supporting your head and your neck. Come back to center. And really do make sure that your blanket has enough uh, fluff, enough fold to it, that your knees are a little bit below your hips. This is going to give you the greatest amount of rootedness from which you can rise. And little known secret is that back bends have a lot to do with what's going on in the legs. So let's walk the right hand out to the side. Left arm beams up. Imagine someone pulling on your wrist, lifting you towards the ceiling. And then exhale, soften over. The ribs have this accordion-like fashion as you inhale, big expansion. And as you exhale, pull back on themselves. And you can bend that elbow even more, walk it out even more if you'd like. Right on. And your next exhale, lean forward 45 degrees. Try to keep both sitting bones rooted to the floor as you do this. A little bit of expansion of breath into the back body. And then please bring your hand to the back of the head and start to spiral upward, lifting your chest, leaning back, softening that elbow. So you're getting just a hint, the littlest hint of a back bend here. Big inhale up to center. And go ahead and take both of your feet over to your right side. This is known as the mermaid sit, and for some of us, we're going to actually need to um, say hello to the block for this one as well, just to be kind and nice to the knees. And if you don't need the block, you don't have to use it. So you can either have your feet parallel, one next to the other, or you can take this top foot, which is your right foot, and hook it in the arch of the bottom foot. Still working the musculature of the upper back. Let's bring the arms to cactus, or goddess arms, sometimes they're called, and spin to the left. So every action of this twist so far is from the musculature of your spine. See if you can make your chin and neck really relaxed, and just engage all the muscles, the lats, the obliques, the rotatories, Scoop your low ribs in a little bit, get taller. And then please bring your right hand, back of your right hand, to the outside of your um, front knee, if you can. Outside of your left knee. And then bring your left hand to the back of your head. And keep spinning. The two parts of our spine that have a lot of mobility and rotation are the thoracic spine, as well as the neck. The neck is really obvious and sometimes it does most of the work for us. So we want to try to get it into the upper back. Lean back just a little bit, head towards the sky. And then slowly release and come back into center. Roll out your shoulders. And swing your legs to the other side. Again, readjusting your blanket, readjusting your block. Be sure to be kind to your knees as much as you need to. And option to hook the top of the left foot in the arch of the bottom foot, a little bit of separation between your knees. Find your goddess arms. By the way, if you're wondering, it's very difficult to have both sitting bones firmly rooted into the floor for this one, so it's normal that your left is gonna be a little bit up. But this is called the, the mermaid sit, my signature pose. So you're gonna keep this and then spin towards your right. And notice what you can soften. So oftentimes it's from the neck or the top of the shoulders. Notice how it feels to scoop the low ribs in and emphasize the height of this shape of this pose. And then really fully take it to the full rotation by working back to your back arm 
and bringing your left hand, the outside of your left hand, to the outside of your right knee. Start to spin, spin, spin. And then maybe lean back a little bit, lifting your chest. Feel the shoulder blade dig in to the upper back. And if you don't have your hand on your head, try that action out. Use the hand on the head is really, really nice help you get the chest lifted and the neck relaxed. And just you guys, back to center. And again, take a regular old cross-legged position. Hands to your knees. On your inhale, roll to the front of your sitting bones, squeeze your shoulder blades up. You can even imagine you've got suspenders on and you're really proud. And on your exhale, scoop, rock back, hit your belly button. Inhale, forward, squeeze. Exhale, and back. And inhale, forward. Exhale, back. Inhale, forward. Exhale, back. Please find neutral and move the blanket out of the way and put your block to the side of your mid side of your yoga mat, mid long side. You're going to lower down onto the back in the middle of your mat. Let's do a few rounds of rolling bridges. So bridges in Sanskrit, um, one of the terms is Situ Bandhasana. And so you're going to flatten your back actually, and then roll up so that you feel your glutes waken up, you feel your core activate, and you feel your thighs a little bit, but hamstrings equal with the quads. Exhale and lower down, letting every single part of your spine come right back down to the floor. You can use um, bridges for any number of purposes. So the second round, let's take the tops of the feet up, dig the heels in, and again rise up. This time try to like pull the feet back asymmetrically, like you're digging a hole in the floor, creating traction in your spine, and you really feel your hamstrings wake up from the back of your knee to the back of your hip. If you could be cramping, then definitely come right back down. And then after a little bit of a hold there, do rest yourself back down. And this time, let's take a purposeful back bend, set the feet flat to the floor again. So I'm already arching my spine off the floor. This is taking my pelvis into an anterior tilt. And I'm gonna lift up and then see if it's a little bit easier to go higher without any strain in the neck. And you can shift a little right and left right and left. So bridge pose doesn't have to be a back bend. It can be a thigh strengthener, it can be a glute activator, it can be a hamstring activator, or you can use it as a big old back bend in preparation for other back bends. Slowly lower down, grab hold of your block, and I think that one of the most valuable pieces of bridge pose is this ability to use the floor to teach us how to articulate the spine. So the next time you come up into your bridge pose, roll yourself up vertebra by vertebra and take your block either in the middle position or in the low position under your sacrum, under your pelvis, and draw your left knee to your chest. The right foot is flat. If you're comfortable here, slide your right leg straight out on the yoga mat. If this doesn't work for you, those two actions, step one would be to put your hand behind the left thigh, and step two would be to set the left foot flat to the floor and then straighten out the right leg. What we're looking for here is the opening at the front of the hip. And if you're not feeling that opening at the front of the hip, raise the hand. The three actions of the leg that's out are straightening the knee, which you've got, internally rotating the 
thigh so that the inseam side of the leg goes downward and the pinky toe side goes upward. And hugging the thigh to the midline. So the leg loves to drift out to the side, hug it back in. And let's spend about three more breaths here. If you're uncomfortable in any way, feeling any kind of pinching in your low back, then please um, lower the block to the middle position, the low position, excuse me. Slowly bend the knee that's straightened and set your other foot flat to the floor as well, your left foot as well as the right. Then draw your right knee into your chest. This sequence is really nice because it allows you a moment of neutralizing before you straighten your left leg out. This might look to the outside person as a really passive stretch, like you're just hanging out over a block, letting gravity do the work to you. But I want you to be really active in this extended leg, in the left leg here. So make sure the heel touches the ground so you have something to push into. Notice one side's different than the other. Straighten the knee, take the inner thigh down, and hug the thigh to the midline. This pose is one of the poses that I think really perfectly um, unwinds or at least assists in the unwinding of sitting in chairs. Can you feel it? I think it's important to that. And if you'd like, you can go ahead and take both legs out. This gets a little tricky when the block is in the middle position. So again, feel free to bend your knees, lift your hips, and Take it down to the low position. As you lengthen both legs out, make both legs really active. You might even press your palms together and reach your arms up overhead. So believe it or not, we're actually in a back bend right now. This is a very, very gentle and supported back bend. And a lot of it is happening at the front of the hips, a lot of what you might feel. You can also feel how active your legs have to be here, how active your core can potentially be by drawing the front hip points up, protecting your low back from the musculature at the front. So let's go ahead and bend the knees and remove the block. And um, roll to your side. Spin around and come onto hands and knees for table pose. So table pose is a really powerful base that you should definitely, definitely push in your knees for if you might need a little cushion when you're down to one knee. So we're gonna start again with the simple flexion and extension of the spine, cat and cow. So as you drop your belly down, put your chest through, this one's called cow, like um, I imagine like a cow heavy with milk. And as you exhale, round it up towards the sky, look at your abdomen and lean into your arms so that you're in cat pose, like a cat on Halloween. Move back and forth at the pace of your breath. Using the pace of your inhale and exhale. If you're not congested, just simply breathe through the nose. The breathing through the nose allows you to get a little bit slower in the breath. Squeeze your shoulders back and press. 
press your chest through, but keep your chin dropping slightly towards the floor. So the back of the neck stays long. Find neutral. And wiggle your knees all the way to touch one another. Reach your left leg back. Bend that back knee and stamp the ceiling just about 10 times. So I mentioned before that glutes and legs are a really vital part of the back bends. And glutes in particular, because you don't want it all to come from the lower back, you want it to also be from the front chest. Please straighten your left leg out, or whichever leg you have lifted right now, up to hip height, and scoop the belly in, like you're doing a plank. Reach your opposite arm forward, opposite arm, and hug everything to the Pinky toe points towards the floor. Length, length, lengthen in the body. And lower down, lower the knee. And set your knees really, really wide away from one another. You can curl your toes under if you'd like as well here. And sit back into child's pose. I took the knees really wide for a very specific reason. Because this practice is a back bending practice, we're not looking to do deep forward folds in the middle of a gentle back bending practice. Probably we're not we're not necessarily doing any passive forward folds in the middle of a practice. And so with your knees wide, you have this longer, more neutral spine than if your thighs were touching, than if your belly were resting on your thighs, you'd be a bit more rounded. On your inhale look forward and shift back towards table position and take the opposite leg up and back bend that knee and then again stamp the ceiling so the secret to this is to try and have it come from the hip as opposed to the back right so try to use your core even as your thigh moves behind the plane that leg out straight out behind you and take the opposite arm forward if your wrist of uh, your standing arm so to speak is tired then spread your fingers and move the finger the base of the fingers into the floor so that more of your hand is really active heel of the hand can stay down your wrist can stay down but let the fingers really curl in good and lower all the way so shift your blanket out of the way unless laying on your belly is uncomfortable. And if laying on your belly gets uncomfortable in your low back, you can actually use your blanket to support your abdomen. It has to go above the front hip points. This is optional, this um, view that I'm giving. So we're gonna inhale and lift up into a hands-free cobra. Try to keep your legs on the ground for this first Round so that you can feel what it's like to have the upper back really warm. Keep the chin dropped and the gaze downward. And if you want to add a little flair to it for the shoulders, palms turn out. So this really activates the posterior rotator cuff and the scapular stabilizers. Exhale, lower down, rest one cheek to the floor. Please bend your knees and sweep your feet side to side. one side feels really, really good on the front of the hip, then that is your hip flexor complex. And you can stay there and hang out for a breath or two. And allow the muscle to release a little bit. We come back to center. And sweep the arms out in front of you. You can rest your forehead on the floor on your yoga mat here, or you can some of you will be comfortable keeping your chin on the floor or just hovering your head up. Make the thumbs up sign and have the arms in a V shape. And just lift your right arm, just the right arm. 
So if this bothers or pinches your shoulder at all, you can also bring your arm out into a neck shape. Elbow to the side, that same cactus shape that we did earlier with the thumbs up. And then lower down. That's your opposite cheek to the floor. Breathe into the back of your body. Bring your chin back to center. Now please lift your left arm up. Again, you can keep the arm straight out to the side slightly or elbow out to the side of the knee for a practice. Keep the thumb pointing up. And then back to center. So if you're chopping the sides of the fist into the floor, the arms back and lift up. So again, we're using the muscles of the upper body to lift. And maybe even take the arms a little bit wider. See if you can, yeah, if you take them off your yoga mat, they'll slide a little better. And if you plug the arm bones into the socket, so pulling the shoulders back, lifting the chest, press your pelvis down, and make your legs really active. Exhale, lengthen. And again, rest your forehead or the side of your cheek, one cheek. Feel free to sweep your feet side to side again. Bending the knees and letting the feet go. Good, and then release everything down. Come back to center. And we're gonna take your right arm and the left leg. Imagine somebody's pulling on both. Really, really gentle. Connect your breath. Inhale them just a little higher. Exhale slowly lower down. On your next inhale, lift your left arm and your right leg. Wiggle your hips a bit side to side. And then just for a brief moment, let's take all four limbs up. Keep your chin down. Your gaze can be slightly forward. Thumbs are up. Toes are spreading. Don't worry about keeping your legs together for this one. We just want to activate the back side. And one more breath. Exhale. Shimmy your hips a little bit side to side. And then please walk your hands back to your low ribs. Keep your spine neutral. So it takes a little bit for engagement to come right back to uh, table pose. We're gonna grab the blanket again for the knees if you wish to have that kind of uh, cushion under your knees. And let your knees go wide and find an active child's pose. So this is what I mean by active. Be on your fingertips if you'd like. You can have your palms pressing down. You can have your toes curled under and make your spine long, like you're getting traction. This neutral spine helps get us out of the back bends, even if it is temporarily. Bend your back knee, 
reach back, catch that foot, and push the foot forward. Chest lifts for to the sky. So balance is a challenge. Gaze steadily at a single spot here. Curl your fingers in, spread the fingers wide. One more breath. And again, if you need your blanket under your abdomen to help uh, your low back feel better, face down, you can do that. This time, bring your palms together in front of you. Bring your toes together behind you. And see if you can keep everything snuggling into the midline of your body. And just lift up. It may not get as high as it did before, but just do two breaths right here. Strong legs. Strong legs. Exhale, the way down. Wiggle your elbows right under your shoulder blades. Right under your shoulders. Just for sphinx pose. And open your hands to shoulder distance. Look at your navel. Lift your ribs, but keep the pelvis down. Strengthen your belly a little bit. Keep that gentle activation of the core, even as you start to look forward. Squeeze your shoulders back and come into this full expression of a sphinx. Back of the neck, long chin down. Look over your right shoulder. Look over your left shoulder. And then come back to center and wiggle your elbows. Resting your forehead down. Last time to winch away the feet. So you can take the feet side to side. Or if you're wanting a little bit more of that hip opening and lower back bending, you can straighten your right leg, lift your left thigh off the floor, just like we did earlier when we were stamping the ceiling. But this time, take it all the way out and Maybe even touch the floor off the right side of your yoga mat. And then move back to center. Bend the right knee, lift it up. This is optional, of course. And take it all the way off and hopefully touch the floor and not the wall on the left side of your yoga mat. Move back to center. Inhale, chest lifts, 
hand by the low knees. Scoop through the core and shift back to neutral table legs. Nice. Three breaths right here. down, please draw your knees into your chest and rock a little side to side. And then please take the legs straight up towards the ceiling. Gaze at the space between your big toes. Activate your legs, but in the softest way possible. Begin to let your eyelids come to half mass. And then slowly draw your knees back towards your chest. If you'd like, you can place your blanket under your thighs or under your knees. Find your way into Shavasana. Last Shavasana option, if you wish, you can bend your knees. This is good for if your low back just tweaked at all. Bend your knees and put your feet nice and wide, letting the knees drop in one. aware of the expression on your face. The eyelids can be really, really heavy. The space between the eyebrows and the eye. Create a spaciousness between the top teeth and the bottom
to wiggle and wake up your fingers and your toes. Become aware of the heaviness of your bones. And allow your breath to imbue a lightness. Starting to move more organically, stretching, reaching, bending one knee to your chest and then the other, hugging it. When you're ready, gently rock all the way to your right side. Use your top arm, eyelids staying heavy and closed, top arm to press up to a comfortable seat. breath, which is 